Great. Hi, welcome to BUS 2110 Management Principles. In this video, we're going to look at the basic structure of the course. So in Management Principles, what we're looking at is what is management? What is the role of a manager? What are the skills that managers need to have? So let's first define management. Management is coordinating work activities so they are completed efficiently and effectively. So when we talk about efficiency, we're talking about getting bang for our buck. The most amount of output for the least amount of input. So can we help more customers? Can we make more goods with less people, less materials, um, less equipment, less time? So we could look at this as doing things the right way. We also want to know, are we being effective? Are we meeting our organizational goals? Do we have satisfied customers? So are we doing the right things? So when we're looking at the role of the manager, it is to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of the organization. So we want to be both highly effective and highly efficient is the goal. When it comes to management, you could have a formal management role. About 18% of the workforce has a title that is a formal management role. So you might be a team lead, you might be a shift supervisor, an office manager, you might be more middle management, so you might be a division manager, a project lead, a store manager, or you might be the upper administration, your top management, you're the president, the CEO. But the reason that we take management principles, no matter what you end up going into in business, is because you will work for a manager, you may also manage in an official capacity, but you'll also do managerial activities even if you don't have that management role. So managers are not just people in the organization who tell other people what to do. So when we talk about that, manager managerial activities or that management role what we're talking about is planning so we're talking about setting goals for your team or your group uh, setting a strategy how will you accomplish those goals and then laying out a plan what resources do we need what are the timelines uh, and so on to do that so there's that planning function we have an organizing function. So who's going to do the work? How are they going to do the work? When are they going to do the work? So we're going to schedule and make sure we have enough uh, workers or team members to get things done. We also need to lead. So planning, organizing, leading, and controlling are the components of management. So we need to lead. We need to motivate. We need to direct people in terms of what to do. And we need to be able to influence people. And even if you are doing managerial activities that's not in a formal management role, it's important to be able to influence people. So we'll talk about that in another video. The last part of the managerial activities, so we have planning, I'm trying to fit my hand on the screen, <laughs> planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So controlling is monitoring performance. Are people doing what they need to do? Are we using those resources effectively? Are we actually obtaining those goals that we're looking after? And so we monitor our performance, we collect data, we take corrective action if necessary. Now, how much you do of these planning, organizing, leading, controlling is going to depend on what level you are in terms of management. So if you're a first level manager, you're going to do a lot more leading. You're the closest in terms of working directly with your team or employees. And then as you move up into higher levels of management, uh, there will be then more planning components. That strategy is often happening at the higher levels of an organization. So you can see how these functions of management uh, change uh, depending on the level of manager that you are. In this course, we're going to be looking at that planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. And so we'll see in our slides little markers like you see here to show you when we are focusing on one of these particular areas. We're going to add to that the environmental component because one of the things we have to consider in management is the impact of 
the external environment to us. We do an environmental scan. That can mean what is happening with our competition. That can be political. That can be uh, what is actually happening in terms of, of the environment, like when we think more like the climate uh, where we live. So we're going to do that external scan as part of our process. And then the other thing we're going to highlight this semester is the emerging technology uh, that is being used by management regardless of the discipline you are in. So we can actually look at management's roles in terms of various disciplines. So you might be a sales manager, you might be a financial manager, you might be a manager in human resources. So throughout the semester, we are going to also flag the management roles and processes for the different functional areas within an organization. If you are going into entrepreneurship or small business, then as a manager, you will be responsible for multiple disciplines. It won't just be that you are uh, in marketing, but you will be responsible for marketing operations. And so managers and small businesses or when you start your own business need to know all those different areas. Uh, and processes that managers follow. So we'll mark those as we go through the semester in terms of those functional areas, uh, recognizing that small businesses, you're gonna do more than just one area. All right, so have you ever been a manager? make sure I'm keeping up here on my slides. Uh, have you ever been a, a manager? And if you've been a manager, what have you been a manager of? Uh, so we're looking for, you know, what kind of experience that you've already had uh, as we look this semester at what kind of skills uh, an effective manager has and what kind of processes and tools managers uh, need. So why a class in management? Well, we already talked about the reality that we're all going to be managed or that we are going to be responsible for some people or resources in our role. And it may be discipline specific. It might be more general management. So then the question becomes, can we teach management in a class? Well, we know the signs of poor management when we look at businesses, right? If they can't keep their employees, if they have low retention, if they are not hitting their deadlines, if they're doing the same projects over and over again. So every year we have people turnover, we have new organizational goals, and we're starting our strategic planning process all over again every couple of months or every year. So redundant projects. If we don't have a method for measuring performance of the organization, of our employees, so there's no performance metrics, uh, it's hard to know if our business is being successful. If there's stagnation, if the business is not growing, then it's poorly managed. So could you go out into industry, get a job in management and figure it out uh, while you are there? Well, sure, we learn from our experiences. But do you have the time and the resources to have your business be poorly managed while you're figuring it out? So we want to look at the tools that an effective manager needs this semester. A quote from Henry Mintzberg. So Henry Mintzberg is a Canadian uh, professor and author, uh, one of the foremost uh, experts in terms of modern management. And he has a quote here, it says, managers cannot be created in a classroom. But if we look at the full quote, what we see is while a manager cannot be created in a classroom, people who practice management can benefit enormously by reflecting on their own experiences and sharing their insights. So that's why as we go through this semester, we want to learn from those who have been managers, whether that's a member of our class, uh, or that is managers that we see in businesses today. And we learn by reflecting. And so the real focus of this class is to look at who you are as a manager. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Where might you focus in terms of increasing your skills? And we're gonna practice those management skills. So one of the things that we're going to be doing this semester, let me just switch our screen over, 
is we're going to be doing a number of personal assessments uh, that you can find in the Pearson Rebel electronic resources. So our book for this semester, we're looking at the fundamentals of management. This is the Robbins uh, textbook. And we're using the electronic materials because we want to do those personal assessments on our strengths and weaknesses of us as managers. And so the first ones we're going to work on, and we will talk about them uh, in the next video, is we want to look at what are our management skills and how do we influence people. So you'll find those uh, personal assessments, little quizzes, just how how you think, how you operate, your perceptions of yourself. Uh, you'll find those in the Pearson Rebel um, electronic resource. All right. The other thing we're going to do this semester is we are going to examine businesses. So we're going to look at small businesses. What if you wanted to start, um, let's say you wanted to sell something at the farmer's market. So very small business. And we'll move on and look at much larger uh, organizations like Amazon and Tim Hortons. So we talked a moment ago about the Pearson Rebel self-assessments. We'll be doing those. Uh, we'll also um, have some additional assessments in this course. So we'll have a pre-assessment that's going to look at what your perceptions are of good and bad managers as we start the course. And then at the end of the semester, you will fill out a similar survey to see if your perceptions, understandings of what a good and bad manager are have changed. So you will find if you're in our course, in our learning management system Blackboard, you will find that link to that pre-assessment, fill out the Google form, it'll send you a PDF copy for your records. Hang on to this because at the end of the semester, you'll need that information as you fill out the post-assessment. We will also have some theory-based tests in this course. We will have an individual project where you reflect on you as a manager. We will have an individual assignment where you're going to practice some financial management, uh, and then we will have a team project where you will uh, practice some of the processes that managers use uh, as we look at an example organization. And then you're going to reflect on your role as a leader and a team member uh, in the individual portion of that project. So here you can see the pre-assessment is just asking you questions about what characteristics and you're giving examples of what you would consider a good manager and a bad manager. It can be businesses you're familiar with, bosses you've had, it can be from TV or movies. Um, please tell us the person or the business and then explain why they're good or bad in case we're not familiar with that individual. Let's go here. Also in this course, we will have 5% um, related to participation marks. Some of those will be those self-assessments in the Pearson Revel. Uh, so you can see that with a star here. It says, what was your management strengths on the self-assessment? So you fill that out, screen capture um, your report at the end, and, uh, and then you'll submit that for participation marks. There are a total opportunity of 30 participation activities here. You need 25 for 100% for the 5% of your course grade. What we'll be doing during our class time is we will be doing a number of activities and those that you can see here, and you'll just need to screen capture those, take a picture, upload those to our learning management system Blackboard uh, in order to get credit. So the idea here, as we were talking about, is to practice those management skills. And so uh, that work you're doing as you practice those skills will get you those participation points. So web class activities, we'll have some assignments and projects as well as a group project. So this semester, we are going to look at what is an effective manager in terms of skills and competencies. How do you make decisions? And then we'll start looking at the decisions that managers make. So if it's a small business, if you're an entrepreneur, how are you going to organize your 
your business. What kind of ownership, what kind of structure will you have? And then once we're up and running, we as managers look at how to improve operations, how to improve the financials, how do we motivate our employees? We'll look at some strategic planning or strategic management. We'll look at sales and customer relationship management. We'll look at managing quality, supply chains, and then we'll start to look at some of the modern challenges of managing, which is having an ethical, sustainable, and socially responsible organization, dealing with competition worldwide and supply chains that span the globe. And throughout this, we'll look at technology that is used in all these disciplines um, by management. We're going to follow the evolution of management through history. So we're going to look at different theories and approaches. And for each, we want to know what situation led to this theory or approach. Are these situations still, these approaches still relevant today? And as you reflect on yourself as a manager, which approaches or theories are you wanting to adopt? Perhaps you're not. So we need to identify the fact that, you know, some of these theories and approaches are grounded in racism, for example. And so we want to recognize what led to the theory or the approach and recognizes their value in that approach. Maybe not in all of it, not in the original rationale, but is it still useful today? So we're going to do some of that reflection on, on each of these as we go through. Now, when it comes to management theory, management goes back quite a ways. In fact, the earliest management we have documented would go back to 1700 BC. Uh, we have the Code of Hammurabi, which really was the first historical reference to accounting practices. So accountants, uh, your discipline's been a lot around for a very long time. We see the first laws governing business dealings and the setting of prices and wages. In fact, when we look at management, early management history, it often comes from war, from military. Because if you think about it, if you are going to war, we need to have commanders, so people telling other people what to do. We need a chain of command. That is, who do you report to? Who does that person report to? So we need lines of communication within the organization. We need to develop strategy. What are we trying to accomplish? How do we know if we're effective? And we need to have distinct roles. Right, We can't have uh, one part of our military doing one thing and another doing something conflicting. So when we look at early management theories, we look at Sun Tzu, for example, around 500 BC. And then we have Confucius around 500 BC as well, where we're looking at some of the first performance appraisals. So lining out in terms of what are the expectations to determine job promotions. Well, we're really going to focus on the post-industrialization age, so after the Industrial Revolution. And so when it comes to management theories after the Industrial Revolution, there are a number of different classifications or naming systems that we see uh, in various different textbooks and writings on management. And they all use different ones. So you might find that in some management textbooks, they talk about the classical behavior and quantitative. Maybe they talk about classical humanistic systems and contingency, or perhaps they give completely different terms uh, to a number of uh, these different eras. So what we're gonna be doing in our class is we are going to use these different classifications. So we have pre-industrial revolution, where we have craft production. You are uh, a tailor, you are a butcher, a baker, and so you're working closely with the customer. It's a customized product to meet their need. Then we have a, the more classical era, era of management. So after the industrial revolution, we are now producing larger quantities out of factories, and the focus is really how do we make more? Then we have the scientific era, which is about more productivity and efficiency. So not just make more, but how do we make more for less? How do we get more out of our workers? Well, the challenge, of course, with trying to get more out of workers is that we start to see 
uh, jobs that are very narrow in scope. So your job is to turn this wrench and that's all you do all day long, right? Very boring, monotonous, tedious. And so then we start to see in management the behavioral focus and that is how do we motivate our employees? And so are they motivated solely based on pay? Well, that was the focus really around that time, but perhaps there needs to be more to the job than just a well-paying job. And so we start to see more a humanistic approach to management, which is how do we get them, how do we increase employee satisfaction? How do we retain them? So more than just motivating them to work hard, uh, but being part of the organization. Then as we move into an era where we start to have uh, computers and the ability to process more data and information, we have a more quantitative approach to management in terms of collecting data about how well we're doing and analyzing the position of the organization. We then move into a more systems approach to management, recognizing that as our organizations are getting bigger and more complex, we need to have an eye on the bigger picture and how all the different areas of management, all the different functions of our organization, how they're interrelated. And then that brings us to the more modern view of management, which is the contingency approach, which says real life is very complex. And so there's not one best way to do things like we might have seen back during the classical and scientific periods, but that what we do and what's best is going to be situation dependent. Okay. So we're going to be working through these this semester, just as they worked through them uh, in terms of the evolution of time. We also see those early focuses were for more small business. And as we get more complex, as we start to move towards those multinational corporations, uh, then we see uh, that evolution to other management approaches. So we will follow that evolution from small business to multinational and from the 1700s to today as we move through these different eras of management. So we're also looking at the size of the organization. So small businesses have less than 100 employees. 98% of businesses in Canada are small business. A medium business is 100 to 499 employees and a large is more than 500. When it comes to businesses, uh, we're located here in Alberta and Alberta has the second highest in terms of number of businesses per capita, so per person, we have the most number of businesses. So we have lots of SMEs small and medium enterprise. And so we are going to look this semester at the small and medium enterprise. And then of course, we'll also look this semester at large organizations, international organizations like Tim Hortons, like Amazon. Um, and the question is, is, do they have the same management needs? And so we'll be investigating that this semester. This course also covers all the material that you need if you want to join the Donald School of Business Science and Technology case competition team. Uh, so if you're interested in competing, then um, th think about that as this course progresses. Uh, we are looking for our competition team and the skills, the tools we learn in this course are all the skills and tools you need for that case competition. So finally, as we end this introductory video, we want to address the elephant in the room when it comes to teaching uh, the introduction to management. Most management theories were or are, are developed by Western countries. So as we look at different theories and approaches, they're predominantly coming from the United Kingdom and the United States because of the influence of colonialism because many other countries and peoples have been tied to the UK and US throughout history, these topics, these Western topics tend to dominate management in practice. But they aren't necessarily the only or the best theories. And so this semester, we will endeavor to incorporate non-Western theories uh, into the course. Um, 
The other thing we want to do is take a more indigenous approach to this colonial topic. So what we've learned from the indigenous people in Canada is to value our connections, to look at where our current practices come from, so our roots, and look at how we came to this moment, our routes. So our roots and our routes, who we are, where we came from, tell us about ourselves. And identity is important. We can learn a lot about ourselves from other people, from everything external to us as well. So people, plants, and history. So what we're gonna be looking at this semester is about learning about ourselves by learning about others and learning about history and looking at what do you identify with, what do you agree with, um, not just throwing everything out uh, that is history, but recognizing the impact uh, that history has had on today. So as we wrap up, we do want to acknowledge that our institution is on land that is located in the traditional territory of the Nitsapi or Blackfoot, including the Siksika, the Kuni, and the Kanai people, the Sutsina, the Stony Nakoda, the Cree, the Salto, and the Medi people. Redger Polytechnic is the meeting place of Treaty 6 and Treaty 7 regions. Our Indigenous ancestors entered into these treaty agreements with the intent to share their wisdom and abundance. And we honor them in this course by the connections we make with each other, by the connections we make with the past and with the future, and by recognizing that all elements of creation can teach us about ourselves. So I look forward to working with you this semester as we dive into what is management, what are the skills to be a successful manager, and what is the role that managers play throughout the different functional areas or disciplines uh, within business.